Hi, my name is Savinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play the Traders and Barbarians scenario of Catan Traders and Barbarians. It is such a different take on Catan, but it really does stay true to the game. It's one of my favorite scenarios. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Before we start, if you're not familiar with Catan, you should watch my video here. I explain the rules of the base game, which you will need for this scenario. Now, Traders and Barbarians follows the standard rules of Catan with the following additions and exceptions. Traders and Barbarians is the fifth scenario of Traders and Barbarians. Now, the Barbarians have mostly left Catan and you are repairing the castle. You're going to use your wagon to transport fine marble, glassworks, sand, tools in order to restore Catan's great castle. Now, let's have a look at how we set up the game. Start with a frame by replacing the frames 1 and 2 and 5 and 6 with the corresponding pieces from Traders and Barbarians. Then place the three trade hexes here, here, and here. Then set aside the desert, one pasture and one field hex and distribute randomly the remaining hexes as in the base game. Mm -hmm. Remove number 2 and 12 and distribute the remaining numbers as usual, skipping the three trade hexes. If you ever roll a 2 or a 12 in this scenario, you roll again. Place three barbarians here, here and here. Shuffle each of the commodities and place them in three stacks near their corresponding trade hex. Each player also receives five baggage train cards matching their color. Stack them face down from one to five. Turn the number one face up next to the stack. This is your active baggage train card. The big coin is worth five and the small one is one gold in this scenario. Each player starts with five gold. You will not use the standard development cards Instead, you use the 25 cards marked for the scenario. Three of them are road building. Three are victory points. Three let you move your wagon twice and the 16 others are knights. Place the resources as usual. However, the longest road and the robber don't play in the scenario. So take them out. The largest army will play. Now we're ready to start playing, starting with the first round. Starting from the first player clockwise and then counterclockwise, each player places one settlement and then one city instead of two settlements. You still only collect one card per resource adjacent to your city. You also place your wagon next to your city. Let's look at the trade hexes in more detail before starting the game. Each of them has a central plaza with a building and four paths leading to it. You can build roads on these paths, but cannot build roads on the coastline of the trade hexes. You can build settlements adjacent to the trade hex, but cannot build settlements on the central plaza. In this scenario, the wagon is very important. As your last action, after you've traded and built, you can move your wagon. It is used to transport one good at a time from one trade hex to another trade hex. It moves from intersection to intersection using roads to move faster. At the beginning of the game, you can move them four movement points per turn as indicated on your baggage train card. Moving along an intersection without a road costs two movement points, but it's only one movement point if there's a road. You can use the roads from other players. You just need to pay them one gold for each road you use. Also, if there's a barbarian on the road, it will slow you down and add two movement points. You can also pay one grain once per turn to increase the movement by two movement points. You need to spend the full amount to move. You can't stop in the middle of a road. Also, when if you don't spend all your movement points, then they are lost that turn. When your wagon enters the central plaza of a trading hex, that ends your movement for that turn. Now, there can be more than one wagon in any given place. The first time you reach a trade hex, pick up a token. It will be one of the two goods supplied here. It can be glassworks or tools at the glassworks hex, sand or marble at the quarry, and tools and sand at the castle hex. You need to deliver that good in one of the other two trade hexes. The castle hex needs marble and glass, the quarry hex needs tools, the glassworks hex needs sand. Once you reach its central plaza where your goods is in demand, 
you flip the token you've just delivered, it's now worth one victory point. Pick up a new commodity token from the top of the stack for that trade hex and place it face up in front of you. You receive the 1 to 5 gold as indicated on your baggage train card. In the following turns, you can start delivering that commodity where it is needed. Now, remember, you can only carry one commodity at a time. And once you've delivered it, you can pick up another one. Now, let's look at how you upgrade your baggage train cards. Each card shows the wagon movement points per turn, the gold you receive when delivering a resource, and if you can, the role required to drive off barbarians. During trading and building at your turn, you can upgrade those baggage train cards by paying the resources shown on the top card of your baggage train stack. Turn that top card and place it on your active card deck. It's now your new active baggage train card. In addition, when you upgrade the last card of the stack, you get one victory point. Now let's have a look at how to drive off and fight barbarians. Barbarians are placed on the paths between intersections with or without roads. Only one barbarian at a time can occupy the same path, but you are allowed to build a road with a barbarian on it. If you want your wagon to move past a barbarian, it will cost an additional two movement points. If you do not have enough movement points, either stop or choose another direction. Now, if you've upgraded your baggage train card at least once, you can try to drive off a barbarian. Pause your moving wagon on an intersection adjacent to a barbarian and roll one die. If you roll one of the numbers shown on your baggage train card, you may drive off the barbarian to another path, as long as it's not already occupied by another barbarian. Whether you have managed to drive off the barbarian or not, the wagon can continue its journey normally afterward. You can try to drive off only one barbarian per turn. Now, remember, when you drive off a barbarian, you don't steal a card. You only do that when you roll a seven and you move the barbarian to another player's road. Players with eight or more cards also lose half their resource cards rounded down. So a player with nine cards would choose four cards to discard. You also get to move one of the three barbarians to any path not already occupied by a barbarian. If there's a road, steal a random resource card from the owner of that road. This has to be a resource. It cannot be gold. Now let's have a look at what we can do with the gold. First of all, you can pay one gold per road you use that belongs to another player. This can help your wagon take the shortest way between two trading hexes. Then, up to twice per turn, you can spend two coins to buy one resource of your choice. You may also trade resources for coins with other players. The bank for 4 to 1 or harbors for 3 to 1. All players play their turn in clockwise order. Each turn in the same order. First you trade, then you build, and finally you move your wagon and resolve its outcome. Now, the first player to reach 13 or more victory points during their turn is declared the winner. My tips to win at Catan Traders and Barbarians are start by watching the tips I gave in my Catan video because they all apply here. Even though you cannot score the longest road, roads are essential to move the wagon faster and cheaper, so try to build as many of them as early as possible. Make sure you always have a reserve of gold in order to move the wagon. Trade if necessary. Do not forget, it is a Catan game and producing resources will help you a lot, so build uh, cities and settlements. Since there's no robber to move, the development cards are nice, but they are not as essential as in the base game. Think of the routes you want to build between the trading hexes, because if you end up having to pay other players all the time in order to move your wagon, it's going to be very costly. That's how you play the Traders and Barbarians scenario of Catan Traders and Barbarians expansion. It is my favorite variant of Catan. It adds only a few elements. It's really easy to learn, yet it manages to stay true to the feel of the base game and reduces the element of luck and increases the interaction between players. I find it's absolutely brilliant. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.